Hello, hi, it's Stephanie from Our Natural Wisdom and welcome to another Soulful Gardening Moment. So good to be with you today. Today we're going to be talking about the wisdom of seeds and their message of abundance for you. So as always, we're going to have a practical garden um, teaching and then also some mystical wisdom and a simple mindfulness practice to go along with it. And if this is the kind of thing that you enjoy, this fusion of practical and the mystical, then I encourage you to check out my 30-day online course, Soulful Gardening with Nature. I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end of today's uh, transmission, but you can get all of the details if you click the link in the bio or the link in the caption. And so let's get to it. So we often think of autumn as um, we look at it at everything in nature in autumn and we see that things are dying back. And, you know, for many women, it feels like a time of um, transition into into rest and restoration, but it also brings up the end of the cycle of life. But in actuality, you are surrounded by the promise of rebirth and the promise of life and infinite possibilities, infinite abundance. And what I'm talking about is seeds. Holy cow, there are seeds, seeds and more seeds out in nature right now. So we're going to be talking about how to propagate seeds, how to propagate native plants from seed. You know that our native plants need so much of our assistance right now because they are truly imperiled. We need our native plants to support our native insects and everything that comes from that. So there's, it's such a worthy project to focus on learning how to propagate plants from seed. So this is the time to be doing that with the plants that flower in late summer and into fall. So there are um, some particularly easy species to propagate from seed. The way that we do it, I'll explain in just a second, but they, because they're dropping their seeds now, you will, um, naturally they are needing a cold stratification period they need a period of cold in order to break down the casings of their seeds so that they can germinate in the spring and i'm going to be sharing a um an approach to doing this that is very easy i um am going to be trying it myself for the first time this winter so we're going to be trying it all together which i love i've done different types of seed starting but this is the one that really resonates the most for native plant lovers and so let's get to it so um, first of all, when you are gathering seed from native plants, please be sure not to gather from wild populations. We need our native plants to propagate in the wild as much as they possibly can. So the best place to obtain your seed is either from your own garden, from a friend or family member's garden with native plants, or from um, a catalog. There are a number of highly reputable native plant seed distributors that you can um, check out online. Two that I would really recommend are Prairie Nursery and Prairie Moon Nursery. Those are two excellent sources of seed and they do have it available right now. So the seeds that are the easiest to propagate over the winter are um, things like I said that are that are going to um, they're going to seed right now, like this Joe Pie weed that is behind me. There's also coneflower, asters, goldenrod, um, penstemon, and um, black eyed Susans, coreopsis. There's a number of flowers that are drying up right now. They're looking this, you know, brown and crinkly. They're going to seed. So, what we want to do is to collect their seeds, but only collect like shoot from only 5% of what is available in that particular population. You don't want to over harvest because again, you want to give them a chance to reproduce naturally. So when you're collecting your seed, you want to use a paper bag, um, 
place it right underneath the seed head or you could um, also use an envelope and just clip the seed heads the flower heads to um, fall into the envelope or into the paper bag now after you do that and i don't know if you just saw that but a whole bunch of seed i don't know if you can can you see all whoops <laughs> can you see i mean this is just like loaded with seeds right so much possibility of all of these beautiful plants that we can propagate um an abundance a true abundance and we're going to be talking about the mystical aspect of that as well so after you collect your seed in the envelope or in the paper bag you want to be sure to label it of course with this with the plant that you are collecting from as well as the date that's very helpful and then you want to set it aside in a cool place to just let them dry out there's a lot of moisture in these seed heads when they are still on the plant so we want them to dry out as much as possible and probably for about a month all right then in late november to even early into january is when you will plant these seeds and we've got a blue jay saying hi <laughs> in the background um and the the tools the equipment that you need to propagate your seeds are some um, seed flats like the regular kind of flats that you would use for um, planting vegetable seeds indoors, putting them under lights, things like that. But this is not going indoors. This is all going to be outside. You can also get small pots like the four by four inch pots. And you will also want some um, compost based uh, potting mix, some coarse sand that is clean, something you can just get from a hardware store, like the kind of coarse sand that you would put in a, in a sandbox, for instance. And you also want plastic labels and a marker to be sure that you can mark all of your seedlings. And um, also some cloth mesh that you can get from a hardware store. You could possibly use a wire mesh that's like a quarter inch squares to a half inch square. These are gonna go over the top of your um, potted out seeds because we want to protect them from any mice or anything else that squirrels that might dig them up. So you start by filling the pots with that soil and then you want to make sure that it's tamped down very well. Moisten it a bit, not soaking, but you want it to be moist. Then you want to sprinkle the seeds on top of the soil and unlike um, starting like vegetables or annual flowers you don't want to press them in you don't need to do one at a time they can be pretty um, well covering that top of the soil you don't want it to be a pile you want them to be separated so that they have some room to grow and some breathing space but you can put a fair a good number of seeds across the top then you want to put the coarse sand over the top of the seeds and you only want to put the sand to the depth that the seeds are deep so if it's a really tiny little seed like just a little you know grain of sand that is really all that you need to put over the top of them for sand if it's a larger seed then you want to put that thickness over the top with the sand then you water that in well and you will want them to be outside so before you even start with any of the planting you want to find a place in your garden space where they can stay for several months to um, be in a level place you want it to be level so that it's not you know tilted so that things won't run off you also want it to be in a shady spot so that they're not going to be baking in any winter sun um, a perfect place would be like underneath a potting bench or underneath a garden bench, somewhere out of the way. And um, then you want to cover up the pots with that wire mesh or the cloth mesh in order to protect them from any rodents or anything that might want to dig them up and eat the yummy seeds. You also wanna be sure to put your labels in and mark what the species is so that you have that information because you are going to just leave this over the winter and this is what they need for a cold stratification period so that their seed casings can crack open and allow for the seed to germinate and start to grow come spring. 
if you you don't need to be watering them throughout the winter because they will freeze if they get snow on top of them perfect that's what nature intends right um, before they freeze however you want to be sure that they are being watered that they have some moisture because you don't want the seeds to dry out dry seeds are bad news when it comes to germination all right so then you leave them all winter you'll start seeing the seedlings pop up in the spring you then need patience because you leave them alone through the spring and even through the summer i know patience can be a challenge but this is so worth it these will um these seedlings will grow over these months and then come next early fall you will have your own crop of native plants to pop out of your containers divide them gently and place into the ground your native plant babies you're like a, a plant midwife turning back to the mystical aspects of seed propagation of course nature is just pouring out this abundance of seeds and every single seed represents infinite possibilities infinite abundance because when you think of how one seed can grow into a plant that then provides hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of seeds over its lifetime pure abundance pure abundance and this is the mes message that the seeds have for you is cultivating your seeds cultivating the wisdom that you have the the dreams that you have and understanding that each of those are a seed a seed that represents infinite possibilities when you nurture that seed when you propagate that seed and when you give it time and patience allow it to play out naturally you will be rewarded with beautiful gifts of abundance and it's nature's way so as we embrace this within nature and um, assist give nature a, a helping hand in propagating more of these native plants you are also embracing your own abundance and the many gifts that are found within that that is the mystical aspect of working with seeds they represent so much rebirth and promise for the future so as a simple mindfulness practice i encourage you to consider plants that have um that have flowers that have passed their their you know most colorful vibrant state flowers that are brown and turning crinkly that state where a lot of gardeners tend to clip them off and think that they're not really that attractive those represent infinite abundance infinite possibilities and the more that we can embrace this within ourselves as well as within nature we will be able to step into that place of feeling that pure abundance in our own lives i encourage you to take the time to really connect with flowers that have passed their um, you know the vibrant colorful stage and connect with those seed heads on your plants especially on your native plants appreciate all of the abundance and the infinite possibilities that they represent and commit to support them in fulfilling their pure essence just as you can commit to supporting yourself and nurturing your own infinite possibilities through your abundance of seeds that you hold within i know that autumn is not a time when we talk about rebirth but when it comes to nature and native plants it is totally a time for rebirth a time for embracing the promise of what is to come and the fact that we have the ability to really cultivate that right now in autumn so i hope that you enjoyed today's soulful gardening moment and receiving wisdom from the seeds once again if this is something that you enjoy this fusion of practical gardening guidance with mystical wisdom and mindfulness practices i encourage you to check out my program soulful gardening with nature 
We are enrolling right now for the fall series, and it is a 30-day online course that um, supports you in creating a soulful garden, one that eases anxiety, enhances your intuition, and brings vital healing to Mother Earth. You can, you can learn all about it by clicking the link in bio in Instagram or by clicking the link in the caption on Facebook and YouTube. I wish you a beautiful day and start seeing the abundance of seeds around you in nature and in your own life. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.